uh, today's lecture is on which are the networking protocols we can use in embedded operating system. So let us see, begin with uh, the introductory part of this. Today we will see about I2C or inter-integrated circuit. This is a protocol which is used for the uh, for the networking in embedded operating system. Now, what are the some features of this I2C protocol? It's a synchronous protocol. Multi-master, multi-slave. That is what multiple masters can take part into that particular process, even though multi-slave. That is what you can communicate with these all devices with a single master or multiple masters. Or conversely, we can say, multiple slaves also involved in the process the it is a packet switched what do you mean by packet switch the packet switch is the meaning in which the whatever the data is going to be transmitted from either master to slave or slave to master in terms of packets or the in terms of messages single ended the reason is that we are using only a single wire for data communication this particular protocol is invented in 1982 by philip semiconductor now where we use this particular protocol this protocol is used for interfacing or attaching lower speed peripheral ic's to the processor and the controllers whenever you want to make a short communication and you have multiple processors or the microcontrollers involved as a masters and some slaves are there then this particular protocol is playing a key role to communicate with one master to many slaves or or multi masters to many slaves that what uh, what does it mean that is what that is intra board communication is possible by using this particular particular protocol now, what is the strength of this protocol? If you see, the particular strength of I2C protocol is the capability of a microcontroller to control a network of device chip with just two general purpose I.O. pins and software. So, if you, I have one more slide for you. So, how we can communicate with this? If you see in a diagram, there is one there are multiple masters are here but you if you assume this is not a master this is a slave this is a single master and multiple slaves are here this is slave 1 slave 2 slave 3 slave 4 and slave 5 so many slaves are here that means what a single master can communicate with all these slaves only by using a two lines that is called as sda and scl so this is about only a, a you can say this is a strength of strength of the i2c protocol it means that the single master can control all the network devices chip onto the board with only a two io pins already i uh, told you that is sdn s clock and a software many other bus technologies used in similar applications such as seri serial peripheral interface that bus requires more pins and signals to connect multiple devices. Already we seen in serial peripheral interface, there are multiple pins are there. They say, for example, MISO, that is what master in slave out, then serial clock data, then chip select or, or chip select or slave select. So multiple pins are involved. As multiple pins are involved, multiple wires will be there or the packaging will be uh, complex and uh, that's what you can say there is a more complexity into the system so to avoid this i2c is a best solution for this if we consider the design point of view i2c uses only two bidirectional open drain lines one is a serial data line that is called as a sda and serial clock line that is scl pull up with the register depending upon which microcontroller or for example in terms of masters now i'm talking which type of masters you are going to be used uh, 
the typical voltage levels may be from plus 5 volt or plus 3.3 volt we can use it for this one for the this uh, hardware design point of view this is a single master and many slaves are connected with a sing a two wires that is sda and scl so this is about the mm -hmm. uh, background or you can say the overview of the hardware design point of view one more thing i2c bus drivers are open drain what does it mean it meaning that they can pull the corresponding signal line to low but cannot drive it high so normally that these two lines are pull up to the plus 5 volt or 3.3 volt as per your uh, uh, as per your master selection thus there can be no bus contention when where one device is trying to drive the line line high while another tries to pull it low eliminating the potential for the damage to drivers or excessive power dissipation in the system so it means that whenever multiple masters come into the picture or into the uh, particular system then if a uh, two or more masters are wants that bus for the communication that time when the sda signal is low then it understand that one another master he is having a control of this bus so he cannot he has to the second master has to wait until and unless the sda pin goes high when it is high then there is a then there is a no issue of the uh, ownership of that bus that that particular master will take a charge of that bus so this is about so due to this particular arrangement there is a no bus contention into the into the process each signal each signal line has pull up register on it to restore the signal to high when no device is asserting it low whenever no any masters into the system is not taking a ownership of particular sda line or bus that time due to the pull up due to the use of pull up register it is continuously high i will uh, discuss about um, more on this when we go for the actual operation you can understand i2c reference design has 7 bit address space now 7 bit address space why we require and probably it may be 7 bit or 10 bit 7 bit is what different slaves we are going to be communicate with that particular master at that time slave address is required if you compare this particular into the spi sp have sp have separate pin of slave select or chip select so there is a no need of the sending the address but here we have to need a send an address the common i2c was spent more than 100 k uh, kilobytes per second standard mode and 400 kb into the fast mode so it means that if you if you uh, think about the i2c the wires we are going to be used to the maximum speed is if we are using standard then it is 100 kbps if you are using a fast mode then it is 400 kbps if it is high speed mode it is 3.4 mbps and ultra fast mode it is 5 mbps and this is a synchronous type protocol and obviously it's a serial how many masters we can connect it is unlimited and slave is more than thousand so this is a really a good uh, advantageous part of this that's what that this we can connect in different kinds of modes now here which are the modes or the which are the components of this architecture now we are if you see in the architecture point of view of the i2c protocol the bus has two roles for these nodes one is a master and slave already we uh, having an idea so what is a master node master node that generates the clock and initiate communications with save so it means that generation of the clock signal mm -hmm. and starting of the communication with the particular or uh, uh, selected slave it is done from the master side well, what about slave slave node receives the clock which is generated by the master and responds when addressed by the master whenever master will ask 
to particular slave that slave has to be respond this is just like a one master and many slaves whenever uh, if you compare or we, uh, if i uh, take an analogous example whenever i am just talking with somebody's name then that particular person has to be respond that is called as an, a slave mode that is what uh, slave node operation the bus in the multi master bus which means that any number of masters node can be present that is what there are multi masters bus is available additionally master and slave role may be changed between the messages that means what sometimes sometimes there may be a, a you can say the um, it is a duplex mode communication it means that master can send the data to the slave or vice versa slave can send the data to the master so this is possible there are four differential or potential modes of operation for given bus device although most devices only use a single role and its two modes now which are the modes available in uh, i2c protocol first is a master transmit the name indicate master will transmit the data the master node is sending the data to the particular slave this is a first it's a simple or uh, in one way communication then master receive now master is in a receiving or master is acting as a receiver so master node is receiving the data from the slave this is the uh, this is a one more possibility slave transmit slave transmit this particular in mode of operation slave node is sending the data to the master yes the slave can also able to send the data to the master it means that that time master is into the second mode that is master receive then slave receive slave receive slave node is receiving the data from the master as slave is receiving from the master definitely it is the one part of the master transmit that is what master is in transmission mode while slave is in receiving so these are the four different possibilities in the modes of operation of this i2c protocol uh, now before starting how actually the data transfer is going through this particular by using this i2c protocol before that we will just take a overview of the uh, parallel communication suppose i have uh, on your screen on your left hand there is a one microcontroller and another is a device so this is a communication now what i want to do i want to this is a seven segment dis, uh, display device and i am using a arduino micro microcontroller board for example so this microcontroller acts as a master while this device is act as a slave now what i want to do i want to i want to display some character on that particular seven segment display so what i have to do i have a multiple wires has to be connected because we have the seven segment display we have eight different wires wires we have to connect along with the data suppose i want to send 1010 alternately on these lines so eight wires of arduino board are connected to the eight pins of that particular device here we can say it's a seven segment so if i want to connect more and more displays or more devices then their number of wires goes on increasing definitely if the wires goes on increasing definitely what will happen the complexity of the circuit is more even though not complexity the power consumption and other aspects also definitely affects on this so to avoid this what is the solution yes we have a solution that is called as an i2c now let's see how i2c will work if this is a only for one device if i want to connect more and more devices with a single microcontroller or the master it means that i have to increase the number of slaves but master is still one that time it is difficult because so many wires are coming to the picture and then complexity goes on increasing as number of slaves are goes on increasing so to avoid it what we what we want we have a solution that is we have now here this is multi master actually but uh, consider this master as a slave for example sake of convenience this is a single master involved in this and these all are slaves all five we are connecting only five but how many we can connect we can connect up to 2 raised to 7 that is what 128 devices we can connect as a slave 
if you seen in a diagram this is a scl this is serial clock and this is serial data so these are the two pins or two wires these are acting as a buses and they can communicate with almost 128 devices okay one more thing these two pins these two lines are connected to a plus 5 volt or 3.3 volt as per your master selection so definitely these two lines are always at a high level that is what plus 5 volt or 3.3 this is a high so logic high is always available on these two pins okay now i2c protocol what is a frame format for this if you uh, seen on a, in a diagram this is a sdl line that is serial data and this is scl so how to transmit the this particular uh, data on this sdl line so first is this is now th this particular is a little bit blur so i will uh, tell you this is a start bit this is a start bit this particular part from a0 to a6 so if you if you count these bits this is total seven bits are there so this is the address of the slave this is a this will give the address seven bit address seven, address of the slave then acknowledge uh, sorry read or write now what why what is the use of read and write read and write bit is used whether master want to write the data onto the display or master want to read the data from the slave now what is the meaning of this if you in earlier diagram if you seen for this suppose this master is here and forget about the other devices i want only a, this oled organic uh, oled display it means that this this master and this slave is there and other slaves are also there but this is a output device it means that master will send the data and it will display onto the device right this is output device so in this particular category what will happen master want to read data no master want to write the data onto the this particular oled but suppose we have a keypad we have a keypad which is one device now in that case suppose this is a keypad then master will not write the data master will take the input from this it means that master is into what in a reading mode are you getting me so depending upon which type of slave you are going to connect according to that you are that particular slave or master will get this bit either reading or writing and acknowledge bit acknowledge is what whenever the frame is received properly then that slave has to be respond to the master that is what the frame received successfully if suppose that particular uh, that particular message or frame is not received properly then an acknowledge bit is also there so uh, let us start with the uh, uh what is the procedure to send the data now in i2c protocol this data which master want to say send to the slaves have the two different two types of the frames now which are the frames there are two types of the frame one is the address frame another is a data frame now what is the address frame the master indicate the slave to which the message is being to send master want to communicate with, with a particular slave from out of many so the address of that particular slave will be involved into the address frame now what is a data frame these are 8 bit data messages passed from master to slave or vice versa it means that this particular bit these bits if you seen this is a data frame d0 to d7 this is our data frame either master will send to slave or it will receive from the slave is that clear so this is first is a start then address bit then read write acknowledge and then data so this is a one form of communication we will see in detail step by step okay what will happen when data is placed on sdl line okay data is only placed on sdl line when scl goes low and it is sampled after scl line goes high okay so okay hmm. 
start condition. What is the start condition? To initiate address frame, master device leaves the SCL high and pull up SDA low. It means that master will firstly leaves SCL high and pull up SDA low. When SDA pin is low, then this particular master can send the data onto the SDA line. This, this puts all the slave devices to notice. It means that this particular start condition is an alert for all the slaves which are connected into the that particular system. That transmission is about to start. The so starting condition is a what alarm for all the slaves that is what communication going to be start now the question is that already i discussed this particular part if the two master devices wish to take the ownership of the bus at a time two masters want to take ownership what will happen whichever device pulls sda low first the device which will pull down that sda line to zero he will win and he will gain a control of that bus so when SDA goes low, that, that particular master is the owner of that bus. It is possible to issue repeated starts, repetition of the starting bit is possible, initiating a new communication sequence without relinquishing the control of the bus up to the other master. So we are the any master can uh, initiate the process when it gains the control of that bus. Okay, now this is a procedure. It's a very simple procedure. If you seen, these are the seven steps involved for the communication in I2C protocol. Which are the uh, which are the seven step? First is a start bit. Second is device address. We can call it as a slave address here. Then read write, acknowledge, send data. Then again acknowledge and stop bit. So these are the seven step involved in that. Now what is a start bit? In start bit. The SDA line switches from high voltage level to low voltage level before the SCL line switches from high to low. If you compare first SDA line, now this is S stands for start. SDA line is switching from high to low. SDA line is switching from high to low, but before the SCL line from high. This is SCL line. SCL line is from is before this SDA. SCL line is high to low first, then it initiates the actual process. Now, what is the indication to the other slaves? When this type of situation arises, then that means that the start bit is sent onto the SDA line, and this particular zero bit, definitely, this is a zero bit, will will alert all the slaves which are connected into the process. So this is about start bit. Now what what is the next stage? Next stage is address frame. Now, there may be a 7-bit address frame or 10-bit sequence, depending upon the which type of sequence we are going to be use. Then address frame, that is what here, if you see, this is A0 and this is A6. So this is 7-bit address we are taking into account for this particular process. So this particular address bit will gives you the the particular device address on which master want to communicate now third is read or write okay one more thing i let you know whenever if you if you think this this is a clock signal when this goes high then and then only that bit is transmitted if you see here clock goes zero no data is there but again clock is one then one is transmitted when when clock is zero no data when clock is one the next bit is one so it means that whenever the clock is clock is higher or one at that time sda will send the bets right okay this is about the strategy of sending the bets next part that's what first is initiate the process then address of the slave to which master want to communicate next is read write now this is the part in which it has to be decided whether master will be in receiving mode or transmitter mode if it is reading then it is one and when it is writing then it is zero now in this case master want to write the data onto this so w will this bit will be zero now when slave now every time slave is not free 
to communicate with the master so what will happen this slave gives the acknowledge signal what is acknowledge signal it will send through the sda line to the master whether that particular slave is free or ready to communicate with the master or not when this particular slave send zero to the master then that master can understand that slave is ready to communicate with the master if it gives one high or one signal to this master then masters can understand that slave is making communication with some other devices or other masters or 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 due to any uh, uh, you can say due to any uh, unfortunate reasons that master uh, sorry slave is unable to communicate with microcontroller or the master so this is acknowledge after that it means that first start bit initiate it will alert for the, all the slaves then address of particular slave is assigned or selected after that whether master want to read or write then acknowledge once once the acknowledge zero is getting from that device or the slave the master will send the data bits here first is ms bit d7 bit that's what this is a data frame the master want to send to the device okay after that whenever this data is received by that slave then it will generate or send one more acknowledge signal acknowledge bit to the master that whether the frame which is sent by that master is received properly or not when this bit is zero then masters can understand that the whatever the data data sent by this master received properly to the particular slave and if it is this bit is one then masters can understand the data which is sent by myself is not received properly at the receiving end and after this communication happens the last bit is stop bit actually then what is the use of the stop bit the sda line switches from now if you seen here sda line switches from 0 to 1 or we can say the low voltage level to high voltage layer after scl line goes low to high it means that here 1 to 0 and here 0 to 1 and exactly reverse process at the whatever we had initiated at the starting at the stop bit so these are the seven steps involved one is a start bit then slave address i can say read or write then final then acknowledge of the readiness of that slave then sending of the data then acknowledge in in this particular acknowledge whether that data is received properly or not at the at that particular slave and then stop it that uh, that particular frame or you can say that communication has to be stopped once it stops then we can start the new we can initiate the new process already uh, we discuss about this process address frame yes already i told you this is 7 bit address this address is clocked out most of signal or msb bit first allowed followed by the read write bit which is indicating uh, for reading it is one and writing at uh, zero this is a again it will be just like a uh, revision point of view then nack or ack bit it is a nine bit of the frame and in this case what will happen once that particular all the data frame or data frame is received by the slave then this is a response from the uh, slave to the master that the data which is sent by the master is received properly or not when this is ack bit is zero then that the master can understand that that this that data is received properly if it is one then there is a uh, no uh, no communication prop no proper communication between the master and slave it means that the data is not received properly at the receiving end or at the slave these are the data frames when address base is uh, when after the address frame has been sent data has begin transmitted the master will simply continue generating clock pulses at the regular interval and data will be placed on sda line by either the master or slave depending on whether the read write bit indicated to read or write depending upon the read and write bit operation the master will read the content from the slave or write the content onto the 
slave depending upon which device you are going to connect in that stop condition already i told you once all the data frames have been sent the master will generate the stop condition how the stop conditions are defined and when there is a when there is a load to high transition on sda pin after load to high transition on scl with scl remaining high so already i told you that is what this is when a stop condition both the lines will be low to high and at the start condition it is from high to low during this normal data writing operation the value of sda should not change when scl goes high to avoid the false stop condition so this is because this precaution we have to take care of so this is uh, this is the summary of the uh, how it works i2c protocol works first is that the i will re, uh, recap on this particular things of the uh, steps which we have to involve in the uh, working of i2c protocol the initially the master will uh, in a master transmit mode by sending a start followed by a 7 bit address of the slave it wishes to communicate with then second this is finally followed by the single bit representing whether it is wishes to write or read from the slave or to the slave if slave exist on the uh, if, if the slave exist on the bus then it will respond with acknowledge bet active loop for acknowledge for that address that is what i am ready for the communication the master then continues in either transmit or receive mode according to read write bit at send and slave continues in complementary mode receive or transmit it means that depending upon read and write uh, bit uh, formation then master will decide it is it is going to read it is in readable mode that your master is in a receiver a receiver uh, or or as by work as a transmitter in fifth the address and data bytes are sent most significant bit first that is what msb bit has to be sent first then six the master terminates a message with a stop condition if this if this is the end of the transition or it may send another star condition to retain the control of the bus for another message it means that if master want to communicate in a similar fashion the same process has to be repeated once again so this is about uh, master and slave uh, already i discussed this particular part if you seen these are the again this is in terms of timing diagram what i uh, discussed earlier this is about sda line this is S, uh, scl b1 b2 b3 these all are bits uh, bits are there and it is going to be transmitted so this is about how the how this i2c protocol is going to work for for us whenever we are communicating a different devices so I request students, if anybody having a doubts, please let me know.